So we're here at uh, Arm Tech Con 2011, and uh, this is the Raspberry Pi. This is the final one. Or what is this? Oh, this is the this is an alpha board. So this is a this is an electrically representative representative board, but it's it's a little bit bigger. So if you look at the yeah the size of the final board is probably the size of my business card here. So if you put that next to there, you'll see we've got quite a big shrink. You know, we're still larger than the, the very first thing we demoed, which had a USB key stick form factor, but we've now shrunk to the point where, um, effectively, you'll have connectors all the way around. Yeah, there's a point you can't shrink past if you want to have this particular feature set. It's about that. So who's Raspberry Pi? Is that you? Uh, so it's me. Uh, it's, um, it's a chap called Jack Lang, who's a, a long-time Cambridge entrepreneur. Um, David Braben, who I think a lot of people have heard of, who is a, he runs a, a games company called Frontier. Um, a couple of guys from uh, the university, uh, a couple of professors from Cambridge University called Bob Mullins and uh, Alan Mycroft, and a chap called Pete Lomas uh, up in the north of England who runs a, uh, a hardware um, a hardware design and manufacturing business. Are you related with ARM or just as uh, we are not We are not related to, we are not related to ARM at all, so we're a charity. Um, we're, a, we're a, a British charitable foundation. Um, we we were formed about two, 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 maybe three years ago, uh, with the specific intention of building a $25 PC. I think it took us a little while to figure out what sort of chip we wanted to put in a $25 PC. So what we've ended up with is a uh, is a chip from Broadcom called 2835, uh, which is Broadcom are my uh, are my employers in my day job. So I should give them a, give them a little shout out. But um, yeah, effectively, it's real. Um, it exists. Uh, it, it meets the price point. Um, it's going it. to be 25 So it's the, the price point is $25 without network, $35 with network. Is that for sure? Absolutely, sir. So you get the PCB and ARM 11. Yep. What else do you get? So, okay, let me, let me do, the, let me do the, uh, the show and tell. So here we have um, the 2835 application processor, with two, in this case 256 meg of RAM stacked on top of it. So it's a, a package on package. The mic. Uh, it's a package on package uh, construction. Um, uh, here we have a, uh, this is a USB hub and Ethernet adapter chip. So this is the only other chip that we have on the board other than the processor and its RAM. Uh, then around the side we have a pair of, um, uh, a pair of USBs, uh, 10 100 Ethernet, uh, analog audio out, digital television out, um, analog television out, uh, and power in. And then down here you can see we have a, uh, an SD card uh, that provides us with storage. All right, so... so uh... What's the, what's the aim? Okay, so the original, it's interesting, the original aim was to provide a platform for, for kids to program on, right? We've got a problem in the UK, I think we've got a problem all over the world, that since we, since we lost the kind of 8-bit computers and 16-bit computers from the 80s and 90s, um, uh, young people don't have a platform they can learn to program on. I've been programming since I was 10. Most of my friends who are in the industry have been programming since they were 10. Um, there aren't a lot of 10-year-old computer programmers anymore, and this is going to be an enormous problem for our industry. So originally the intention, it's an enormous problem for the university, which explains why we have university participation, and it's an enormous problem for industry. So um, that was the original intention. However, all the, the, the people who are primarily interested in it right now are the kind of maker community, the hacker community, the kind of people who buy Beagle boards, the kind of people who buy Arduinos. Uh, this is something which gives you most of the processing power of a Beagle board, uh, much better multimedia obviously than a Beagle board, in a kind of Arduino um, price bracket. So, you know, there's a lot of interest in that area. And so what we're expecting to do is to sell our first maybe 10, 20,000 devices into that community and then go and attack both the educational market and the developing world um, productivity market. This makes a great productivity computer if you're on a budget. So when you attack the education market, mm -hmm. you would like to have the government buy a bunch? Uh, that, would be, that would be one thing. Uh, I mean, the aim here was to provide a platform which is cheap enough that children can buy their own. So we have some, we have some ideas about how we can encourage children to develop for it. Uh, we're intending to have a prize pool um, to, uh, to encourage children to, uh, um, uh, to write applications. I know that when I was, when I was programming as a child, um, uh, one of the reasons I was doing it was in the 1980s there were all these stories about kids uh, you know, making, writing computer games, making a lot of money, kids who had a Ferrari in their, uh, in their driveway that they couldn't drive because they were only 15, you know, that sort of thing. And there was that sort of sense that um, it was an activity you could engage in which might make you a little bit of money. So, um, so we're trying to maybe reboot that. And obviously, you know, we'd love to have some involvement from government. We'd love to have some involvement from the educational establishment. 
Um, but there, I think we're going to be fighting the fact that uh, you know, there simply aren't that many teachers who have the technical background required to, uh, to, to teach computer programming, and there never have been. I think it's possibly unrealistic to, uh, to hope that there will be in the future. So are you PCB designers? Raspberry Pi? Okay, so uh, Pete Lomas, who I mentioned, uh, one of our trustees, uh, yeah, his, his, his firm are uh, kind of industrial mil-spec PCB designers. You know, they're, they're very, very good at designing very low-cost, very stable boards. You know, boards that um, it's easy to design a board that you're going to make 100 of. Uh, it's very hard to design a board that you're going to make 10,000 or 100,000 of. So, um, you know, he's been, Pete has been incredibly helpful with that. I know a little bit of PCB design, but my PCB design stops with you know two layers and uh, um, 0.1 inch components. So why, why uh, how does a Broadcom solution fit maybe better than some others? Um, uh, we think there's a we, there's definitely a cost advantage. I mean, this is a very um, there aren't I believe um, any other devices out there that we could have used on this board that provide the same combination of low cost and very high multimedia performance. Uh, we don't believe that there are, um, I can't off the top of my head think of any other API I could have used that have the same amount of multimedia performance. So say if we'd used, um, I mean Tegra would be one obvious chip we could have used. Uh, that would have had much lower multimedia performance and would have cost us, you know, potentially the entire cost of the board to buy a single one of those chips. So, um, so, you know, we've been very lucky there. Um, you know, Broadcom has been, you know, Broadcom have been very helpful. So we're very grateful to Broadcom for all of their, all of their support at this point. For the, for the UIs to be fast and smooth, you need to take advantage of the GPU, right? Indeed. So one of the things that's currently we missing... Ah, here we go. So let's see... Um, start the desktop. So one of the things that's missing at the moment here is um, uh, accelerated X drivers. So we do have hardware on the device. Obviously you've seen from Quake 3, we have an enormous amount of pixel pushing capability on the device. Um, and yet, you know, this X11 instance you see here is running with pure software. 720p? Oh, this is 1080p. 1080p output. 1080p output. So if we... Uh, it's, uh, it's a little bit of a mess. Let me just... If I just open a... Uh, Let's just open the file manager. I can maybe show you some of the issues that we have at the moment that we're looking to address. So if I drag this around, you see it's not very, uh, it's not particularly smooth. And if I resize this, it's not a particularly smooth. Um, is that something trip. that Inaho is working on? Uh, so this is something actually we uh, we've received an enormous amount of support from the uh, Fedora, the, the the Red Hat community. So. Um, uh, you know, we're hoping to work with people in that community to provide a set of uh, a set of optimized X drivers. Um, I'm still not certain whether those will be ready in time for the initial launch. When is the initial launch? The initial launch is to, intended to be at the end of the year. So uh, you can see here this says uh, November 2011. So it's um, a Christmas present for $25. Uh, that's the hope. Now I think November is probably yeah you know, November is quite an aggressive target. Um, I think you know we've always said that you know we hope to go to volume. Um, towards the end of the year. Um, I'm not 100% sure how the end of the year became November. Um, but, you know, we, we have devices in manufacture, we have, um, we have, invent we have uh, parts inventory now, so we've committed um, large orders for parts. November is next, next week? Absolutely. So we've committed large orders for parts and we have devices in manufacture. Um, I think the question for me is going to be how many of these we can get out this year, because we know that we have an enormous amount of pent-up demand. How do you find the, the money to do these big orders? Uh, well, that's interesting. So our intention is to manufacture these in, in 10,000 off. And um, if you look at the cost of the device, that implies a, a requirement for a working capital budget of uh, two to three hundred, uh, two to three hundred thousand um, uh, dollars. Largely, we're self-funded. Self-funded. Yeah. Okay, no need for a big government investment for start, well, stuff to start. Uh, yeah, I think that's the thing. I think to, to start up, there's no need for that investment. I think if somebody wanted us to be producing them in 100,000 unit batches, then you know we would need to go out and find some source of funding. The nice thing is we're at a point, 10,000 units is a good size, is a good batch size. You know, we can run through these very fast. And it doesn't require a completely killing amount of, uh, you know, a disastrous amount of, uh, uh, of working capital. So let's check uh, some other stuff. Okay, let's, uh, let's have a look at... Uh, the only other significant application I have on here at the moment is Ice Weasel. Um, it's going to take a moment or two to come up. Um, uh, if you look at the board, you'll see what's going on here. This light here is flashing at the back. 
this one is the SD card access light. Is the memory bandwidth going to uh, be fast or? Uh, the SD card, so SD cards, um, a root file system on SD card is a, uh, can be a slow and painful thing. Um, uh, a number of people who've been using this um, are using it, have been using it with um, uh, either USB attached hard drive uh, or an NFS, an NFS mounted uh, root file system. And that does give you better performance. Than but here you are. So this is the Raspberry Pi website um, running on a Raspberry Pi. Um, you can see we have a reasonable amount of performance. Um, I'm not sure if you uh, I'm not sure if you're aware of this. This post we put up a few days ago uh, give you an idea of how long we've been um, uh, how long we've been working on this for. This is Raspberry Pi from 2006. So you know we've been looking for ways to build these very cheap computers for a very long time. Back in 2006, we considered building something like something like this. It's actually based on an Atmel AVR chip, so it's based on the same chips that you have in um, uh, a uh, in an Arduino. And we found a way to make this. Um, uh, to, to make a $25 PC based on this. But in the end, and the nice thing about this obviously is this uses only the sorts of components that you can solder at home. Raspberry Pi is not really a home assemblable product because it uses um, fine pitch BGAs, it requires reflow, reflow solder. Um, the nice thing about old Raspberry Pi, about uh, a 2006 era Raspberry Pi, was you could build it yourself. The downside is it had maybe 1% of the performance of a current Raspberry Pi. So uh, in the end, we gave up on that. But, um, yeah, we thought we'd post this. We posted this on the website last uh, last weekend, uh, just give people an idea of where we've come from and how long we've been trying to do this. Cool. So looking forward to a nice Christmas presents. Yeah, awesome. So yeah, uh, come visit our website, raspberrypi.org. Uh, when they come out, buy one. <laughs>